Hi, my name is Maria Vila and uh, today I'm standing probably in the most famous street in Reykjavik, Iceland. It's a rainbow street and uh, since I moved to Iceland uh, I experienced just incredible and uh, totally different lifestyle and uh, in today's video I also want to discuss about it and uh, we'll chat with a very creative, active person uh, the girl, she moved from very warm Greece to a big cold Iceland so let's discuss about her art and lifestyle in Iceland enjoy the video Hi! Welcome to my uh, exhibition in Talk 2023 and you can have a look here at my work. I live just right up the street. Uh, okay. in, we're in Gravogur right now. Uh, so this is um, the path where I take from my home. And it leads down to the ocean. And there's all of a coastal path that I usually take when I want to get inspired. Uh, oh, I see. Especially in the winter, I would usually just wake up, leave the phone at home, and then just be here with, with the landscape and the nature. So I know that you are originally from Greece and uh, you moved to Iceland. Uh, so I believe that this is totally different uh, kind of uh, lifestyle. And of course the weather. Yeah, so I come from a very small island called Santorini. Uh, so it's uh, another volcanic island like Iceland, but just uh, a little bit warmer. Yeah, I mean, it's very small. So it's in some Iceland, Iceland, and it's pretty, cool. it's pretty small. So it didn't feel that hot to, to move uh, to a city like this. I moved here actually when COVID just started. Okay. <laughs> so the first two years of living here were actually very different to my reality now. Uh, so in the beginning I thought, oh my god, Iceland is such a boring place, there's nothing to do. Where are the people? Where are the artists? Where are the festivals, the concerts or whatever? There was nothing. Uh, so I really thought that this was how Iceland was. So it was it felt very um, discouraging in the beginning in a sense. But now I'm experiencing Iceland in a whole different way and realizing that there's actually so much going on even though we are the isolated island in the middle of, <laughs> yeah. of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but if you really keep your eyes open, there are actually a lot of things happening. It's just a matter of kind of being persistent to meet new people because it takes time. <laughs> I don't know how it's working. So, in the one artist, uh, do you do you go some nice place like this one, and after you just see like, oh my God, I see next picture. There is a lady. <laughs> there is a tree. Okay, just or how it's working? Oh, it can be totally random, to be honest with you. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having some fun. Uh, usually, I will just. It just kind of happens when in in the canvas. I don't I don't expect it when okay. it does happen. Um, what I do is I kind of take mental notes. Sometimes I will see some compositions in nature, like let's say, all oh, these certain trees with this distance between them, the angles, and then maybe I'll put that in a painting. But I don't know when or how. It just kind of has to feel right, I guess. <laughs> Hi, welcome to my studio. Oh, wow, nice. Thank you. So here is my painting station. So I always have this with me when I paint. So I usually have my brushes and I use white spirit to thin out the paint. I will so touch everything, here. you yes. don't mind. <laughs> go, go ahead. Some of them are softer and okay. so you can see there are many different, different ends to them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, anyways, I have just many different ones using for different styles and everything. So I just move this around. You can see I, I work with oil paints, so I have them all <laughs> uh, categorized with different mm -hmm. colors, so it's just easier to grab them. Yeah, so I also work with oil pastels. 
oil pastels. So we used something similar when we were kids, like crayons. But mm -hmm. these ones are special. Special. Like, yes, because you can thin them out with the white spirit. So I usually use them to mark on my paintings, uh, and then it works really well with the brush. So it's a it's a technique that I use. Uh, it helps a lot with creating different shapes and lines. Like for example, creating all of these lines here. Uh, because paint can sometimes be very hard to work with because you're using a brush uh, so this gives a lot more control and uh, strength. I uh, personally love uh, uh, create videos. This is something like I'm calling this uh, hobby. Uh, I also was working in the social media field uh, creating video stuff content but uh, I always call like my sport and uh, videos it's just my hobby. That doesn't yeah, matter yeah. how much I do because I really love it. So, uh, do you? How do you feel your art? Is it uh, also like work or just a hobby? Or how can you describe this? That's a good question. So I just graduated from uh, my uh, fine art university uh, from Athens in September. Uh, so it's just been my first year of not being an art student. So I am making my first steps into the, you know into real life, <laughs> adult life. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> as a student, when you're in an art school, you always put, you have this umbrella around you of um, support, and it's kind of just when you go out of art school that you have to start thinking like, okay, how do I see my art? Should I be a full-time artist or try to be? Or and it's it's hard. You have to choose. Like, do I live? Do I work a you know in a part-time job and make little money so I can try to forward my career as an artist. In my case, uh, right now I'm working a full-time job, so I, there, I don't have as much time as I did when I was in art school to paint and to create. Uh, however, I do rent a studio through the Art Association in Iceland, which I just became a member uh, this year. So I am right now doing as much as I can, <laughs> as much my time allows me, but I do definitely see myself in the future uh, trying to live as an artist, at least trying to, mm -hmm. and having a part at least of my income from my art and trying to make it as a career and an artist. Yeah. How can you describe, for example, this painting? Yes, so this was my uh, painting from last year. So out of this series, this is the oldest painting out of the ones that I have here to show you today. Um, so basically this painting was created by um, taking walks by near my home. Uh, we are right next to the ocean and we have Asia just across the water. So in the winter, I would take these long walks, I would leave my phone home and I would just uh, go out there and start walking and just really get inspired by the landscape. And there was one particular morning that I got really inspired. The whole place was just snowed in, so everything was white and the uh, sun was just coming up. So in the winter time, it's around 11, 12 o'clock, the sunrise in, I think, December. And it was so pink that everything was just pink because of the sunrise. So the snow was reflecting that pink and oh we were walking and just seeing the sun on one side, the full moon on the other. So I put these elements, uh, the trees were barren because it was winter. So I use elements like that from nature, from real life and incorporate them in a painting while also keeping it very abstract in a sense. So I am using some narrative elements. Uh -huh and putting it in just a com completely my own uh, synthesis. Now that you finished university, uh, so you studied the art as well? Because, you know, I sometimes I think, oh, I'm a creative person, I will just <laughs> like, ah, do something. But uh, yeah. uh, how it uh, looks like to study art? Good question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's definitely a love and hate relationship with art school because art is something very tricky to be taught, uh -huh. uh, I feel like. But going to art school definitely gave me a really good foundation how to paint, how to draw, composition, everything. So yeah, the, so you it's like some history. base. Yeah, exactly. 
And then the whole purpose is to take all of this knowledge and then you take it and make something of yourself and some, something that is unique to you in a sense, like to find your character, your voice. And that is a whole different thing. And university can't teach you that necessarily. Like they can show you maybe how, but it's something that you really have to do yourself. Uh, so, uh, full-time job, five hours for art. Mm -hmm. What about rest? Do you have some other life? What do you do uh, the rest of your time? Sleeping? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I like to sleep. <laughs> but um, I'm also a dancer, so I actually do that as well. Uh, I try to do as much as I can. Um, maybe once a week, I try to go to and because um, I'm also a pole dancer and I'm working on some projects also to do with dance uh, so I also do that you know it's I'm a multi-passionate person so it can be sometimes very hard to exist with myself because I'm like I want to do so many things I want to and uh, what do you think is it possible to now have that knowledge just uh, don't study anything just be yourself like oh I'm talented and to get I don't know results and be famous yeah I mean there are no rules no rules no rules um, it's always good I mean in this world to have some sort of degree of course it can help to get some more government funding etc it gives you more of like a, a validation you know in this kind of regard but you can be 60 years old and become a yeah. international famous artist if this is my main question how to find this balance to be able to create do you have to be lucky or you know where is the yeah yes. what do you think about that you know of course we always in the process but what how what yes. is your opinion i think it's to have this balance, I found that I just had to be very disciplined and very strict with my time and to put boundaries, but also to see what I'm willing to sacrifice to be to have this kind of lifestyle because something always gets sacrificed you yeah. can't have it all um, I remember when I was being an art student I had to sacrifice certain things in order to have, you know, have the grades or make sure I did everything so even now um, it, it's very exhausting at, at times uh, but yeah it's just you have to make peace with what are the things that you have to sacrifice in order to work have an income and not worry about, oh, I need to buy a new paper, yeah. can I afford to, or whatever. So to have that privilege and have, okay, I can I can buy myself a new set of brushes or some fancy oil paints, but there's always a price to that uh, as well because you need to carve out time. Yeah, and we're course, paying with the time. And yeah. mm -hmm. To be able to, okay, no matter if I have a very hard or stressful week at work, Right now, I'm in my studio and I have just five hours. I need to make the most of those five hours. So it's kind of like being yeah, a little bit a soldier. But it, it, some days it's easier said than done, you know? So you study how to mix the color to to have the something you have in your mind or yeah. some technique? Yeah, oh, exactly. So now since I already have my base here, I'm going to keep going with this tone to bring some definition in the background. And a lot of other painters can use other painting mediums. However, I just use white spirit to thin out. I feel like it gives uh, this more ethereal vibe in my paintings yeah, which know, I try to I, I saw give. you don't have a, how it's calling like boardings you don't have everything how this is calling in English like um like shapes yeah in you, a way. yeah you don't have it's like mm. darker colors mm. yeah shapes. exactly no and I actually never hardly ever use black Oh. Uh, only when I really want to use very uh, um, dark definition usually I would use maybe like a this kind of a uh, tone yeah. um, and okay. then I will mix the colors together so. to, to sure break. Can, yes yeah. so here I've used a little bit of black just because I really wanted it to be very dark 
to okay. be very really dark. Yes. Wow, it's so dark. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> I think this is the main question for all tourists or every uh, person who, however, heard about Iceland or something like this, the weather. Yes. Oh. So how do you feel the weather, the difference between Greece and uh, Iceland? It can be very tough, uh, you know, especially in the winter. <laughs> it can get quite overwhelming. It's very dark, a lot of cold, and definitely very different from the weather we have back in Greece. <laughs> uh, but I try to use this as um, in a creative way. It kind of, when it's dark and cold outside, I just find it as a perfect excuse to be in my studio and work and. Uh, being also inspired by this um, by this situation and try to make the most of it uh, but it's the cold is definitely something that I don't think I'll ever be used to <laughs> I'll always be wearing three layers of everything <laughs> so am I all year round I'm giving shape to the background well, also making sure I have the levels correct. So I always use my fingers as well. Um, so it's a full on experience. Have you been traveling many uh, all around Iceland? Yes, as much as I can. Um, I, but I've seen many uh, different locations. I mean, of course, like the basic stuff that every tourist get, comes and sees in Iceland. Yeah. But even Golden just uh, where I live, just in Gravigur, we have Esja just outside of our window. So that ha has been a nice source of inspiration uh, for my work. And actually moving to Iceland created uh, such a new, different style um, for my work because I was just always in this wide open uh, field with you know mountains and you can't not get inspired by it mm -hmm. and also I hear this a lot from people that they come to Iceland and they get always so inspired I think there's just some the energy of the landscape here there's just something about it that is uh, very powerful and it draws artistic people in uh, and um, yeah and I mean also Iceland has the most artists per capita The artist was not your first, like, uh, just uh, I want to be an artist from the childhood, or no. how it was? Actually, you can see from this photo here, uh -huh. me being very small, wearing my ballet costume. Ah, so you did the yes. dancing from First, the... I was a dancer, and ah. I was going to be a dancer. And then oh, so. after moving to, uh, to Australia when I was 11, going to 12, uh, there are uh, my teachers pushed me to pursue also my art because they were like, oh Veronica, you have some really good eye on this. You're Thank you so much for being uh, in this video and for uh, joining your routine, for sharing your, yeah, the part of your life. Thank you as well. My pleasure. Uh, no, no, no. One second. Uh, what about follow us on social media, mm -hmm. subscribe this YouTube channel, uh, like, comment, and share with your friends. <laughs> this is how it's supposed to work. And cheers, see you in the next video.